Welcome into Anime Plus, episode 81 on Alex Light with Sparky3. Hopefully you have an incredible day. Whatever day you are listening or watching this wonderful podcast over at youtube.com forward slash Sparky3. Give us a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Uh, join with me as always. I got Zach. I got Zach here in studio, which has been a couple episodes now since you've been in your studio for Anime Plus. How you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing good. I'm trying to think now. Has it been? I mean, yeah, it was just we, last well, week. Well, we did the bonus episode, and that's why I said a couple episodes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that bonus episode's still in the ether, so. Yeah, it is. Hopefully, I'll actually edit it like I said in the episode. <laughs> 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 but yeah, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing good. I'm, I mean, we're getting through summer. We're almost, I mean, this is still our nice period. Then we're going to hit October, and we're just going to be fucked. Yeah, it's going to be, October is going to be rough, and. You know, looking at what we have on the script now, like you made this, you point this out before we started, where you're just like, and you were worried about what you're going to watch in summer. I mean, you were. I was, and I feel like I had legitimate worry. You know, I did. You know, I didn't know what I was going to watch, but because I'm the reason I'm saying that because we actually have another show added to the lineup this week. Uh, the first episode just came out uh, yesterday, I think is what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, Futo Pi, uh, which is, I now have come to find out, is also already a series. Uh, it's a live action series as well as oh. like a manga. So it's, it's, and I noticed that I, I went So it's this, getting the triple treat, huh? Listen, I went into this fully blind. I just saw new show, episode one. Sure, let's click it. Did no previous research. So, like, a minute in, I see what, like one particular character in like a, a certain outfit, and I'm just like, that's a fucking Cayman Rider, isn't it? Sure as shit, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a Cayman Rider series. Oh. Yeah, so it's the police. So it's the police of the Cayman Rider universe. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, yeah. Those poor bastards. Yeah, our, you know it already had its live action show and everything. Anyway, gonna <laughs> chat about that. Uh, got classroom the uh, classroom of the elite season two. Now in the lineup, I have I, I went through all season one. Had a good time there. Uh, then of course still have just like the course recoil and a girlfriend overlord summertime and meme quest. I'm sorry, Zach. Nah. Yeah. Uh, if you could, though, go check out some Rogue Energy. Uh, use a furl link down below, promo code SPARKY3 to get 10% off. We'd appreciate that support. As well as go to our website, sparky3.com. You can sign up for free or sign up five bucks a month. Uh, keep in mind with the website, like all like extra videos we post up on the channel will always be available for early access on the website, such as the one that I put up this past week involving Immortal Weakling. Uh, the new series that kicked off on July 14th in Webtoon. A very My Hero academia -ish vibes. If you have not seen that video yet, I uh, definitely recommend it. If you are a die-hard My Hero fan, Immortal Weekland might be a series for you to check out. Uh, and of course, go follow us over at Twitter, at MN Podcast. We'd appreciate that. Uh, I think that's everything that we need to run through. I'll start turning on the music. I mean, that sounds about right. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, seriously, go check out a Mortal Weekly video. I'd appreciate it. Oh, shout out to the Josh Pillow, of course. He is on the screen with us right now. Shout, yep. shout out Josh Pillow. <coughs> Josh, how you doing? Awesome. All right. Yeah, fantastic. You know, it's funny you say that because of uh, Crunchyroll today. I looked up, I'll start watching a series called The Daily Life of the Immortal King, okay. which I assume they got through Funimation. I could be wrong. I didn't really dive too deep into it. But it threw me off because it started and it did a animation studio and stuff logo. So I went... I don't recognize those studios. And then the series started, and it was in Chinese with subs. I went, I forget there's Chinese animation studios. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against Chinese animation studios, because first off, I've watched a couple episodes, and it's it's really clean and everything. It's just with the, It's not as common. It's not as common. Yeah. And with the sources, the legal sources, uh, we have to use to watch anime and stuff. You don't get to see a lot of the Chinese series. But I should have figured, because it's a cultivator series because like the first shot after it gets through all the logos and studios and everything is literally somebody in a uh, plane which i don't know how much cultivator stuff you read or watched one of the things is cultivators once they get to a fort will r fly around on their swords and it's a plane that's made in the shape of a sword <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it like asta <laughs> no we're talking like oh an actual plane like an actual okay. plane okay. that's been shaped and modeled into the frame of a sword, like a regular saber sword. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully you had a good time with that. I mean, it's it's in the level, it's in the range of um, Saitama, because the main MC, he's just wanting to coast, <laughs> and he gives no fucks. <laughs> right. Because the first episode is literally... The shots of, oh, this big great demon king showed up and was destroying the city, and there was a 
group of um I forget what they call them now, but uh hunters or whatever their equivalent is trying to take it down. And he's just a small little kid. Everyone's running away. He's just walking to the gro- walking to the corner store, gets himself some some uh package of chip noodles or something like that. And in the middle of it, he's just like the guy sees he's in danger, he's like, kid, he saves the kid, he drops a snack, the frog thing crushes it, and it goes on the whole stuff for the rest of the episode, only to reveal the frog got taken has been sealed and got taken down by the kid. He was like an eight year old at the time. Hmm. He just the dude's about to get died and everything, and the frog's like, Ah, snack has shown itself. Fucking kicks in the fucking jaw, it flips backwards like I don't like being interrupted with my snacks. <laughs> And carries the fuck on. <laughs> I respect that. I don't want to be interrupted with my snacks either. <laughs> All right, before we jump into stuff, let's shout out some things, uh, of course. Uh, so, did get confirmed that High EQ Season 5 is happening. So, shout out to that. Which also, I feel like it's a, a perfect timing sort of situation. Because uh, Zach and I just did a uh, bonus episode. Yes. Uh, it'll be a normal numbered episode, but we have a couple weeks here uh, coming up very soon that we need to uh, take off those weeks, but we still want to put out episodes. So one of the episodes we put out was uh, Big 3, Big 5, uh, that we are going to put out as, as Big 3, Big 5 per decade. And I will say, High IQ definitely was brought up in that conversation. You know, it's interesting to see this, because we're getting High IQ Season 5, and then Prince of Tennis Season whatever, I think it's technically Season 2, um, is going right now, too. So nice to see that the bigger sports animes or, or series are coming back. Another one that we also talked about in that video, as no surprise, getting its anime confirmed, Kaiju number eight. Yep. Yeah, baby, it's Tom. It's Tom, the prediction that I made like a year ago. Well, a year or two ago. Year ago, yeah. I'm going to pull that up that fucking clip I have to. It won't be hard to find because it was literally one of our preview clips. Yes. Shout, out to, shout out when we used to do preview clips. Um, uh, I'm going to pull that back up when Kaiju number eight is a smashing success. Pull that up. Uh, we do have um, Control Expo starting tomorrow. Oh, that is tomorrow, isn't that it? That is tomorrow. So lots of information should be coming out of there, most notably with Chainsaw Man. So uh, we're going to have to keep an eye on that one going into next week. Uh, I did also see with Chainsaw Man how they're holding like a special event uh, on September 19th uh, to, crem- uh, to celebrate the upcoming anime, right? But it's like a top secret thing, and only 10 people are allowed in there. What? Yeah. Ten people are invited to it. What? Yeah. Where? Wherever this is. What? It, all, all, it literally says a total of ten people will only be invited and will have top secret information revealed. Ooh. I don't know what the hell that could be. I hate y'all. Yeah, right. Uh, series that you're reading, Akane Banashi's doing very well. Shout out to that. First volume recommended by Oda. Second volume recommended by Neon Genesis creator. Apparently third volume's got someone else lined up. And, uh, I, you know, there was also the news where Undead Unlux is getting its anime. We already knew about Masha. We know about me and Robico. Sakamoto had a lot of buzz this week. Yep. No Sakamoto, official announcement. No but... official announcement. We know it's coming, though. Yeah. I mean, we know it is. And I saw uh, one of the pages that I follow <laughs> say, at this rate, it's, it's like, at this rate, Akane Banashi is going to get an anime adaptation before Yozakura Family. Moment of silence for Yozakura Family anime. Moments pass. You sent me that, and my response was, is this your AMA group you go to every week? <laughs> hey, look, you the core family will get an anime, okay? Let me, let me, let me stress that. It will. It, it's, reached its, it's reached its point in its life, and it's like its popularity of the sales that it has gotten, where it will get an anime, but it's just like, at, because it's on like the lower end of popularity, it'll probably just be when the series is done. Because isn't Ayakashi Triangle also getting an anime? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one is, too. Yeah, that's that, another one that, that started That fan out. service series that yeah, it is. Mega, mega fan service. That You know, you know that one's going to pop off online. I might watch it. We'll see. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, and then um, second live action for movie for Tokyo Avengers is happening. I still need to watch the first one. Still need to watch the first one. Yeah, we got a link posted in one of our Discord somewhere. Yeah, if that link still works. You can still find it at that website, but that exact link may not work anymore. Oh, gotcha. Uh, but yeah, the web it's the same website that I use for summertime rendering. Uh, does have um, you know the the live action movie, and I've been meaning to sit down and watch it one day. Maybe we, maybe we could watch it one night. We'll pop it up on Discord. Sounds fun. Yeah, we'll do something like that. Uh, I guess with that, I don't got anything else. You got anything? Um. 
I don't think so. Okay. Lots of big news this week. Yeah. Legit. Like, lots of big news this week of, like, you know, stock mode days leaking, undead and luck. Um, to be fair, yeah, because I know uh, one of the channels I follow, they've been posting up a lot of new trailers for animes this past week. Yeah. And, and Witch Watch is probably going to get one at some point, too. You know, I always look at it every week and go, I could check in, see where it is. <laughs> see if it remembered it had its plot. Then every time I do, I'll go... But I don't want to be dragged back in. <laughs> right. That's why I'm just avoiding it. You know, we know Lose Samurai will get one at some point. Hopefully. That one, I feel like, will probably get its anime when the series is done. Because I don't think it's going to be a long run. No, it already feels like it's getting closer to the wrap-up already. Which I want to say, like, when the series started, it was, like, open and acknowledged, hey, this will not be a very yeah, long they, I remember run. us talking about, they were very much stated that this is not going to be a long-run series. Probably, right? like, 100 chapters. Yeah, we're yeah. aiming for about 100 <laughs> Yeah, so that one will get its anime when the series is just done. It'll probably be like a 24-episode season or something probably. like that, you know, show. But anyway, let's jump into stuff. Um, you know, I'll, I'll start because we got the new show for the lineup this week. Uh, br- just kicked off, so I'll, I'll kick off with that, I guess, and we'll jump into everything else. Uh, Futo P.I., um, you know, which uh, is, like I already said, like a, a co- you know common writer series. It's already got its own live-action show and all that stuff, right? Um, you know, it's got a manga for it and everything. So I will say I feel like this is going to be a show that you would enjoy just because of like the main characters. Uh, I mean the fact that it's apparently the police of the Common Rider universe and knowing what Common Rider is and what we got from Common Rider during our childhood. I'm just like, as I just stated before, those poor bastards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I, I definitely think it would be a, a show that you would particularly enjoy, uh, just because like right out of the gates, right? Well, okay, let me let me stress this: not right out of because right out of the gate you get like a like a flashback sort of sequence of like our main character's father, who was like the common rider, and how he died and passed on his hat to his son. His son had a no moment, and then it brings us to the present, where it has our main character, who I got it pulled up here, so I at least get his name right this time: Shotoro Hidari. Got his name. Boom. But the house has pulled up. Anyway. Right. Anyway, Shatoro, um, you know, he's at like a pier. You know, he's like in his detective outfit, whatever. He pulls out his phone, takes a selfie, sends it to someone. That someone calls him, starts yelling at him. It's his sister. And she's like, you know, why, what are you doing? Why are you wasting time? He's like, but don't I, don't I just look like super hard boiled? Like, it's just like, like his personality where he wants to look super cool and everything. I feel like it's something that you would appreciate in, All right. in, a, in a character. Uh, when he, you know, uh, that, you know, detective agency is the whole mentality behind this show. You know, our main character running this detective agent, his father was a great detective, et cetera. Um, you know, so, you know, at this first sequence, it's like, Hey, we got a client on the way, get your bass back over here. And then, you know, as he's about to leave, he sees this, this woman who's like, like unbelievably gorgeous. He's like, you know, like, you know, you're geared up to like try to talk to her. You know, he's like, oh, I got this. I got this. Tries talking to her. They say a couple things and like, she goes like past him, whatever. He goes to turn around and she's just gone. It's just like, all right. That was kind of weird. Anyway. So goes and uh, gets to meet the client. Uh, the client talked about how there was a woman who like stole his bag, which was like full of cash, but he wasn't really worried about the cash as much, but more so the bag. The what? bag bag really means a lot to him, but he also really wasn't worried about the cash as much because he, he it's love at first sight. He loves this woman. It happens to be the same woman. You know, the detective immediately starts to kind of dial it in where he kind of figures it out where it's like, yeah, it sounds like she's the right woman. Like he, he tried chasing her after her bag got stolen. And when he went down an alley and she was just gone, the alley was a dead end. So it's just like same thing that happened to Shatoro when he, when he bumped into her, she's just gone. You know, she's known as like the angel or whatever. Angel of something is whatever, how that she's being referred to as. Okay. So basically, you know, you get a quick introduction to his partner. Uh, you don't get to actually see him. Cause he's like chilling behind like uh, like some curtains, like sleeping, like, you know, just vibing. He's just like, hey, do you want my help? No, I got this. Are you sure you don't want my help? I got this. <laughs> it's like, don't need your help this time, bud. Appreciate it, though. So we, go, we pretty much go through the rest of the episode. And, and like, the thing that's going to be very interesting about this show it, you know, it, it is taking place in like a fictional setting. Um, you know, basically, it's a fictional setting of Chicago uh, okay. because uh, the Futo part that is the name of the city, but it is called the Windy City Futo. So it's basically a fictional Chicago. Gotcha. So that'll be kind of cool. Uh, but like, this show is going to be a trip. Like, that's going to be the big thing. Is this show is going to be extremely wacky, 
with what the hell is happening in this series. So, like, you know, he starts his detective work. He starts asking around, whatever, trying to deter- figure out, like, maybe anything about this woman that he can. He ends up he ends up finding her because she's essentially, like, homeless. And, like, one way or another, he, you know, he ends up finding her, just her, you know, completely naked out in public, washing herself at a, at a fountain in the middle of a park. Oh, All right. okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he, he ends up finding her and everything. They start like a big, they end up starting like a big chase and shit. And, you know, and that's when he finds out that like, you know, how she disappears is because like she can like run on air. <laughs> she can fly. Is it like... So what you're telling me this chase just leads to a naked woman running through the sky? She, well, she ends up getting dressed because okay, they, 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 yeah, they try to talk, they try to talk it out, kind of thing. But no, like you know, with this chase, like she's literally running through the air. He gets on his bike. He's being a badass in the bike. Really cool animation. Very cool uh, scenes there of him running. You know, of what he's doing all on his bike and everything. Uh, you know, just it's, it's same thing at the beginning of the show where it's like the you know because when you saw you could see the dad die, there was like some quick moments of action happening of the common rider fighting enemies. Very beautiful animations. Very very impressed with the animation. Which by the same studio that did your show, Skeleton Knight. Yeah. So shout out to that. Shout out to that. Um, but you know he ends up losing her naturally because this woman is literally flying. Uh, he ends up managing to find her again this time with the guy because the guy, like, even though she stole a stupid amount of money, he's just like, I'm not even worried about the money. I just want my bag back. I want a chance to talk to her, you know, maybe try to steer her back away from her way because she's, like, so beautiful and he's in love with her and this and that, love at first sight. Is he a vampire? No, no, he's not. He's just an idiot. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Legit, that's what he is. He's an idiot. Um, So... You know, the one of the next chase sequences that we have is like he's chasing her, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, Shotoro just like goes from wherever he's running at, like in an alleyway or whatever, to just like in front, like in all of a sudden, he's inside of a building, and he's just like, What the f- how the fuck? And he bumped into like some like, like some mob members and everything as well, where there's like, You're not supposed to fucking be here, or, or you know, it's magic shit's happening, yeah. some, some weird, you know, Fugazi stuff's going on right now. Um, and the same thing, like when, uh, he, they find her again and they, they're both chasing her, like the, the random guy, uh, he, he attempts to chase her. He's kind of out of shape, but he tries. This just sounds like a really weird game of where's Carmen San Diego. Basically. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cause like whenever they start the next chasing, that's when it's just like, they basically go to like an alternate dimension. It's like everything is all sorts of fucked up. <laughs> everything is all sorts of weird shits attacking them and everything. It, it's it's a wild show. I don't you know, remember Common Rider having magic, but okay. It, it's gonna like I don't I wouldn't necessarily say magic is the right word. I'm not sure what the right word is. Okay. You know, because they haven't given us the right word. Uh, but it just gets very, very strange. Like basically walking this another dimension, you know, like I said. Shit starts attacking them. Very weird area. They end up managing to get out. Um, you know, uh, Shatoro's in a position where he is basically about to get fucked. You know, he's you know he's very athletic. He's very you know a very athletic build, and he's like dodging a bunch of shit, blah blah. But there's like then it comes to a point where there's stuff that he's not gonna be able to dodge, and then that's when his partner comes in and saves the day because his partner kept bugging him throughout the whole episode. Like you know at the beginning where he's like, "You sure you don't want my help?" No, nah, I got it. You know, Shatoro leaves. Whatever. He gets a phone call later, and his partner's just like. You know, I'm pretty sure you're gonna need my help on this one. I'm just saying, you know, like I'm. So is this partner a precog? Is it partner what? A precog? No. Okay. No. You know what a precog is? No. <laughs> That's why I was gonna say no and keep it moving. <laughs> a precognitive person, so someone who can see the future, clairvoyant. No. Okay. No. No. Yeah, he's just very smart, and just by looking at the case and like looking at general details, he can. He can come down to a point where he's like, "Yeah, I might help. It's probably gonna be needed." Okay. Um, you know, he he ends up coming in and you know saving, you know, Shatoro. He's just like, "Hey, you know, sorry, man. I know you want to be nice and like hard boiled and everything, and I don't want you know want to rain on your parade, but I really feel like you need my help on this. So I'm gonna jump in this case, whether you want it or not." And like saying all that, they're not on bad terms at all. Like at all like they are like best bros best buds yeah, it's just Shatoro he wants to be hard boiled and do everything that himself you know because like you know when Shatoro you know starts to stand up he's like you are right we are two halves of one detective they have like a nice little, like a little bro thing going on <laughs> yeah they start walking away they, I don't remember there might have been a, an explosion behind them I don't remember uh, you know the, the the partner's name is named Philip so that one's easy to remember thankfully uh, he's also voiced by Shigaraki's voice actor, which is very, that's weird. Very jarring for me. Yeah. Cause like, as soon as I heard him, I'm like Shigaraki, <laughs> like what? 
this was the alternate universe. If Shigaraki had not killed his family and just never developed yep. powers, he would have become a private detective. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. No, I mean the first episode was very entertaining. I know my normal explain. Never oh, shit, does I think it, I just threw out a big spoiler. Oh no, it's been animated. Never mind, I'm good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, a big spoiler for what? I thought because I threw out the Shigaraki killed all his, his parents. I was like, oh, oh. Shit. I was like, oh shit, that's a spoiler. Yeah, went, it's no. animated. No, I'm uh, good. You're, yeah, you're good. You're good. That one, that one's done. That one's yes. done. Yes, that one's done. No, no accidental spoils today. Hey, look on the bright side. You'll never be as bad as Josh and I. Look on the bright side. Literally, first episode. I don't know of what Ant- you're talking about. I know it's gone. It's it's up in here though. <laughs> first episode of Animan, Animan, not Animan Plus. We jump into this thing, five minutes in, starts just like, from literally the end of the fucking manga, starts spoiling Demon Slayer. That's a great way to start a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but no, Futo P.I. is going to be a very interesting ride. You know what I mean? Like, the bromance between the two characters, like, just how there is no, in my opinion, like, set world necessarily like okay. it's very clearly like we're going to be jumping into a lot of weird shit between this character who is essentially a like you know she described herself as a witch is how she described herself mm-hmm. the alternate dimension shit that happened and then also just like you know this is a you know common rider series so like they're going to be able to turn into a common rider at some point i mean it's literally shown in the first like two minutes and also looking up uh the actual show uh apparently it's called common rider uh double it's where, because like the moment I saw it, the moment I saw it in those first few minutes, the first thing I thought of was like one of the the latest seasons of uh, Power Rangers, mm-hmm. um, or I don't even think I don't even it may have not even become a Power Rangers. Thing. I think it may have just been Super Sentai only, where there was one Ranger who's like literally split down the middle in these two different colors, because that's what it looks like. I mean, I've got it pulled up here, okay, for you to see. Like you know, he like split yeah, down the middle, green and black, yeah. But uh, that's who apparently they uh, they become. I don't know how they become it together, but they do because okay. that's how the website has it listed. So we'll see what happens. And you know they they might be able to see that. I mean, my monitor's kind of in my camera. I'm shot. very curious what that live action is now because that live action just sounds like it would, should be very entertaining. I well uh, you know it probably would. Most Super Sentai's are. They're very over the top. Yes, they are like Power Rangers watchers and fans. They don't understand. There's Bollywood. And they're Sentai. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, they don't get it. But no, Futo P.I., it's going to be an interesting ride. That's the main thing. But it's also going to be one of those things that um, we'll see if it uh, makes it every week for me. <laughs> okay. I mean, I enjoyed the first episode, but, uh, you know, we'll just see where it goes from here. Uh, with that said, how is Overlord? Uh, episode five of season four. So Overlord, we're, good. we're trying, starting to get into the... One of the first main things of the episode or this season, I should say, um, because so there's always a fun thing with Overlord and just how our MC, whose original name I don't remember if it was ever stated, even in like the first episode, but he just became Eins Olgone, Eins Olgone, and everything, and he goes about all his plans and whatnot with all the uh, floor. Leaders becoming his subordinates, well, being over the top subordinates. We had some nice little moments with originally with that first uh, Albedo and Deming Yugis. He's got a demon like name, I can never say it properly. Are talking and talking about how Ein's plans and whatnot, and just how Ein's does things, and all his people interpret it differently because they put him on a pedestal. So he can't do wrong. Mm. And just how just consistently in the series and just through the story, it just nonchalantly goes, yeah, he just does things and it just stumbles around in the right direction for him. And it's just the thing of, that's not what I intended, but okay. Because the whole thing with the previous episode where the Empire decides they want to become a vassal state, Albedo's talking to him, she's like, I don't think... Lord Ains was satisfied with your plan. What do you mean? Well, was there ever an option which would have turned the Empire into a vassal state? He was like, well, of course, but it would have required Ains to do stuff, and it would have taken a month. And I can't, as a servant, ask my ask the Supreme One to do something like that. She hands him a document. They've asked to become a vassal state. It took him three days. <laughs> 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 and he's just like, 
my word, what would we, what would he want with an incompetent like me? <laughs> and it's just this, it's just a great thing of just all his people just putting him on this pedestal of when he does things and it just happens to do other things. They're just like, Whoa. right. And just, cause there's even a moment cause he's going towards <clears throat> the Dwarven kingdom because he learned about runes and that the doors did runes. So he's wanting to gra- get the rune technology from the dwarves. He goes to the lizard people he conquered back in season two because one of them had been with the Dorvan kingdom at one point, wanted him to lead him. And it was a whole moment with Cocutus, one of his other leaders, who's there supervising the lizard people and everything here. He's just like, while they're having this conversation, he's just like, Lord Ines, if you're going to have a long conversation, you should sit, you should sit down comfortably. And he's just like, okay, sure, we can do that. And Cocutus just gets on the stage Bows down. He's just like, Cocutus, what are you doing? Use me as a chair, your majesty. <laughs> I'm just, and he's just like, uh. He's like, Shaltir said you sat on her one time. He's like, that was a punishment to her. He's like, yes, but one of my people was being rude to you. So this could be a punishment. He's just like, fine, whatever. <laughs> that's like a step on me mentality. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how all his people just about feel. Please step on me. <laughs> because he sits on him and he's just like, do you feel comfortable, sir? He's like, who was a better chair? Me or Shaltir? He's like, why do you want to know that? It's like, why is that important? It's important to me. He's just like, well, that's literally what he says. He's like, it needs to be important. So I know how I can be comfortable for the one who's to ride me in the future. Oh. And he's just like, what is Overlord? <laughs> well, the thing with Overlord is like, so it's a standard. The game, it was a game originally, and the servers were supposed to shut down. And Ein's Ulgone was had made a had became the leader of this big old guild who was focusedly monster races. They purposely were all monster races, made this big old dungeon for human players to come conquer and whatnot. And just they put tons of time into it a whole summer and made this gigantic guild and labyrinth and everything. And just he was celebrating the game as it was shutting down. It's the last time he was gonna stay with it until the very last second. Server shut down instead of shutting down his soul or consciousness or whatever was left in the game and it was teleported to this other world. Along with that, all the NPCs and whatnot that the people had created his guild all have settings. Like, the NPCs they all created and set up the AIs. Like, the AI, the, like the NPC creator for this game would be absolutely insane. If we ever had a game with it, people would have such insane builds and characters because it's like to the finest detail describing how this AI and character should look or act. And thus leads to all of our characters being really weird <clears throat> because of the 20 members who all made characters. They all made slight weird things about their characters. Like Albedo, for anyone who doesn't know, she was originally supposed to be a straight up slut. Like she was supposed to go around and just literally fuck anyone who came around but because of one little saying he changed before the service she became overly in love with him so instead of just going and find any guy she now solely looked at Ainz mm-hmm. and everything and like even Ainz has made one character who was who's the guard to their treasury and he's a super edge lord <laughs> his character is super cringe um but yeah so all the leaders have weird traits but carrying on he goes to the Dorvan kingdom and all this fun stuff and Finds a dwarf who can rune, who can do runes and whatnot. Wants to recruit him. Is going to go to the other dwarven kingdom where people move to. The creatures, the demi humans that had attacked and forced the dwarven kingdom to uh, move, anyways, came out. Shal- he tells Shaltir to go and capture him. She just high tears it and just captures him all in moments and everything without killing him. Then interrogates him to learn that um, they're apparently moving to attack the Dorvan kingdom and destroy it because they found a way to get past a fort, this big old fortress. So they're going to, they're in the process of literally going and to destroy the kingdom. And they were sent there to attack anyone who managed to escape to this old haven. And the dwarf's just like, but what? How could they do that? And Nines is sort of just chilling like, I mean, if we're going to do diplomatic relationship, I guess we can go save them. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to it because... The Overlord's opening always really give a good show of everything that's going to happen. So there's several segments of all this stuff that he's been doing with the Kingdoms, the Dwarven stuff. At some point, the Avengers are, I assume, going to attack his city of Erantil and try and take it back because there's a nice little shot of some anima- anima- 
Artemantian level adventure fighting one of his death knights. So we should get some very good action scenes here towards the second half. Okay, okay. Uh, I guess next up, uh, I can go to La Chorus Recoil, episode five. This was actually a pretty interesting episode, I'm not going to lie. Actually, this is probably my favorite episode so far. So is the series slowly getting you? Slowly, yeah. I mean, it still has, like, a lot of the same elements that I was kind of worried about, or it's just, like, one wacky adventure after another. Mm -hmm. That was kind of my worry. But, like, there is still, like, there is still an overarching plot that is still there and referenced. It's not as bad as Witch Watch. I'll put it that way. Because Witch Watch, (laughs) Stone Cold forgets that it has a fucking plot. Stone Cold. When it remembers it has a plot, it's really good. Yes, it is. Yeah, but it forgets it has a plot all the time. So this show doesn't forget it has a plot. It's, it's still there, but there's still also just like a lot of wacky adventures or whatever the case is, episode to episode. I mean, last episode, uh, for example, you know, they went to the, the aquarium, you know, and dicked off and had a great time, which then created a, a gif that everyone was sharing on, uh, you know, on Twitter of uh, Takina, you know, who's like, I've, who I've compared before, like the more like the Setsuna sort of character, okay. like a little more serious, you know, yeah. not as bubbly as like just Ch- Chisetto, where like, you know, Takina went up to like the aquarium and like, you know, made, you know, did like a fish motion, you know, like just being cute shit, right? Okay. So like, you know, so that, you know, there are moments like that in every episode, but like this episode had a couple of interesting aspects about it um, where it was kind of, touched on Chesito's past okay. right because like there's a they're like there's there's this necklace that she has that represents a you know the place that she came from essentially and it doesn't dive into it a whole lot I'm you know this will still come later but like the, the pieces that was addressed was like oh that's very interesting where it's like I want to know more because like literally the episode starts off where like their new mission for the day is to um, basically escort this very high-ranking official, whatever, and just take him on a tour of Tokyo, right? So he comes in, and um, I, I I feel terrible for forgetting this guy's name, but who's the guy who's, like, stuck in a wheelchair and communicates through, like, a... Stephen Hawking? Thank you. I, the name just slips my mind all the time. Basically, this guy looks like that, right? Comes in in a wheelchair. He communicates via, like, a little computer on his on his wheelchair. He has okay. g- goggles. You can't see his eyes or anything. You know, that that is how he, that is how this character looks, right? So they're going to escort him around Tokyo, give him a tour. They got a full, like, brochure and everything. It's all going to be a great time. And, uh, you know... As, like, they are going um, to leave, like, he makes a comment about, like, himself because, like, they uploaded the brochure into his little computer so he could see it kind of thing, you know? And, uh, you know, uh, you know, Chisito makes a comment where they're kind of similar in a way. And when she does that, she makes, like, a heart, whatever. And then, you know, the guy's like, oh, so you have, like, a, you know, a pacemaker or whatever, whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, and she's just like, oh, no. You know, and then ba- she basically, I don't remember her exact words, but she says that she doesn't have a heart. And then, you know, he's just like, oh, you, you know, you, oh, so you're in, and, you know, he said, it responds where you kind of understand what she's talking about. And she was like, did, did, what, what did she just say? You know, she's like, all right, everyone, let's go. And she sits out, like, walks out the guy, super bubbly, having a great time. And Takina's like, no, seriously, are we just going to ignore that she just said that? (laughs) (laughs) She's just like, come on, Takina. It's like, okay, whatever. It doesn't really get brought up. She is the tin man. Basically. Doesn't really get brought up for a little bit. Like, they're going on the tour, having a great time, and blah, 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 this, whatever. Um, You know, that's when you get introduced to, like, I guess the antagonist of the episode, uh, which is uh, an assassin. I forgot. I forgot the name, but he is a well-known assassin, a silent assassin. I think it's le- actually not think about. It. I think his name is literally Silent Jin because he's literally no one even knows what he sounds like. No one's even heard his voice. You know, for, you know, for the people that he's ever like, you know, had you know encountered in some capacity. It's like people that he's worked with. So like this particular assassin is is trying to assassinate said higher up whatever throughout this episode or trying to reach him steadily, surely you know steadily but surely whatever. Uh, there was that. There was a moment where, like, you know, they were kind of chilling on a boat. You know, the higher up went, you know, inside the boat, not out in the heat, whatever. And Takina and uh, Chisito was sitting there talking, and then readdressed it, where it's just like, "Hey, what, about the the no heart thing." And she's like, "Oh yeah, I don't have a heart." You know, I, you know, I always thought it was kind of weird that I didn't have a heartbeat, but now I think it's kind of cool. You know, so the reason she doesn't have a heart, we don't fully know, other than the the little owl figurines, uh, like you know, necklace that she wears. That organization is the ones that essentially like saved her life because of whatever happened with the heart. 
Gotcha. So it's something that we'll find out later. It was not addressed at all throughout this so episode. So she's a walking corpse. Basically, yeah. So which is pretty interesting. I mean, I'm I'm pretty interested in this fact, right? Uh, after that, we this is when we kind of start gearing up to like a lot of different action sequences with like the assassin and stuff like that. You know, trying to track him down. We find out from this higher up official that uh, you know once he kind of figures out, you know, because Jacinto and Takina is trying to kind of keep it secretive. There's assassin on him, you know, but he, you know he kind of figures it out. He's like, yeah, there's 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 an assassin on us, right? I bet it's you know it's Silent Jin. He killed my he he murdered my wife and my children many years ago, and I couldn't do anything about it. And now he's coming for my life too. The reason I hired you here today for this Tokyo trip is I want you to personally kill Jin in front of me. <laughs> yeah, because you know he can't, right? So why does this series go so hard all of a sudden? <laughs> as that's that that's the theme of this series, bro. That's the theme of this series, man. Um, so we're gonna have a gunfight on the subway. Then we're gonna go shop for underwear. Yes, exactly. <laughs> then 100%. we're gonna t- then we're gonna tour around Tokyo with this VIP. This VIP just in the background. Yes, kill this man for <laughs> basically me. for me. Basically, basically, you get a lot of shots of Takina and him duking it out and fighting. Uh, Chisito comes in and does Chisito things, you know, because she's a fucking badass, but still not using lethal bullets. You know, she's still she has no desire to kill anyone. Candy which canes and rainbows, basically. I mean, like literally, the bullets she fires off like sprays off red paint. So, uh, you know, in even one of the higher up came up after like they they managed to take out Jin. He's just like, all right, now kill him, kill him in front of me. I want him to die. And Chisito's like, sorry, I don't I don't kill people. And it kind of I and she kind of alluded that it goes back to the whole like organization thing that saved her life. It kind of goes back to that where she doesn't want to take other people's lives because her lives were saved, right? So that that's kind of her mentality on things. Uh, and then you know, um, so th- and all it also gave some general like alluding to whatever organization like saved her life. Like the people that come from that organization are very like important people in some capacity. That's about the best I can tell you right now. Cause it's still like, we're going to figure it out more, gotcha. you know, because even the higher up said, you know, if you're the, the children of whatever, you know, then, you know, you, you can do this and this or whatever, whatever he said. So he kind of alluded onto that. And then basically as they have the conversation where it's like, no, I'm not going to kill him. Sorry. Uh, the dude like dies, like the assassin. No, the, oh. the, the, like the higher up, he just like dies. Like, there's he, there's no heartbeat. He just uh, stops talking. Computer shuts off and everything. Uh, and then we come to find out that the the body that you saw in that wheelchair the entire time was already dead, and it wasn't even this higher up. Uh, this high the guy the body was just some random guy that died at a hospital, and they took his body, put him in the chair, and put all the equipment on him. There was someone else, you know, the man behind the chair. They that- first Bueller really him. Basically, yeah, because that even like you know, like I guess like the potential like antagonist, whatever, is the way the vibe that it's set up for is it felt like an antagonist. Like all the only shot you got of him, the man who was actually like controlling like the computer and talking to the girls the whole time, he had that same owl pin on his uh, on his suit. That's the only shot that you got of him. Uh, and then the episode ended with more of like I guess general fan service that everyone is kind of coming to this series for. Did they at least recruit Silent Jin? No, they went in separate ways. Yeah, it's also when it came to Silent Jin, like the uh, the head the head guy of this shop that like the, it's like in charge of like Shito and Takina. Him and Silent Jin were partners once upon a time. So like they have like they have like a little like you find this out at the end of the episode. Like I, I didn't I didn't forget to mention this. Um, so like they have like a little moment where they talk and then they go separate ways. Uh, but yeah, like the last shot of the episode was like, uh, like, like, like that fan service stuff that everyone, like I've seen personally, everyone hype up online, like the ship between Chisito and Takina, whatever, because like when they were on the boat, like Takina, like sh- it's not like one of those things where like, there's a very visible interest between them, you know, but it's just like more so like Takina is just like oblivious, you know, to a lot of things. Like she's very like straightforward. Like whenever, you know, Chisito said that she didn't have a heartbeat, Takina's first impression was to go in to grab her chest because uh, she wanted to feel and see for herself there's no heartbeat. And she's just like, I don't grab my chest in public. You know, don't do that. So at the end of the episode, you know, Chisito is like laying down on a bed vibing. And then, you know, Takina, you know, lays her head on Chisito's chest just for the sole purpose of like, Oh, there really is no heartbeat. And Chisito's like, yeah, it's cool, right? <laughs> and that was how the episode ended. So I saw that and I'm like, ah, more fan service for and people. And there's just a screenshot of them laying on each other. Yeah, exactly. Okay. A hundred percent. 
So, I mean, the, I, I, I do the amount of hype that I've seen online for this series just based on that, like a ship between them two. Like, that's literally the so hype. So, the hype the is just the fan service? It's not even like when I, when I say fan service, like, there's not even actual fan service. You know what I mean? It's just like people like just really want these two to be shipped together. That's all it is. Okay. And I also want to stress, and I should have stressed this when I first started talking about the show, because I, I knew about it, forgot about it, and then remembered it. Uh, you know, there is no, like, content to go based off of for this series. This is an original anime with a manga coming later. This is based like, a talk-op situation ah. where the anime came first and the game's coming later. The game still doesn't come out nope. yet. Hopefully sometime. They're still getting updates for it on their Twitter. They're still putting videos up, but that's about it at the moment. But that, that's the situation we're in for this. So it's not like, you know, we can refer to a manga and say, oh, look at that. They do get together. Oh, no, they're just very good friends, you know. So that's that's one of the that's one of the big hypes behind this show, at least on Twitter. That's the hype that I see all the time on Twitter is the shit between these two. Lloyd and your are very good friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. That <laughs> was alright episode though. Uh Rent a Girlfriend episode fifteen. Uh this one is actually very quick. I can do this one very, very quickly. Was it just a standard rom com? Yeah, basically. Uh, literally all it is, is, uh, Mizuhara's birthday is coming up. Uh, Yoz- uh, Kazuya is freaking out the whole time, not knowing what to get her. So we spend an episode going shopping for a gift that we eventually don't get, but we get something sentimental enough that she accepts it anyways. More or less. I mean, he does get a gift. <laughs> he does get a gift. Yes. But yeah, uh, he doesn't know what to get. He's freaking out the whole time. So he hits up uh, everyone's favorite uh, shafted girl of Sumi uh, to get her help. Uh, Sumi is kind of in the same position as like, I uh, can't remember her name. Uh, who is the who is the third, you know, the, the other girl in blue box? Not the main character. Hina? Hina, thank you. Hina's not getting shafted though. <laughs> She okay. We both know she's. I mean, going eventually, to be. yes, but Hina right now, he doesn't in the lead. <laughs> Hina's not in the lead. Let's pump the brakes. We know that's not the case. Bullshit. Bullshit to your bull. Anyway, off topic. So you know, Sumi is in that position where like she's super cute and everything, and she likes Kazuya, but she's super shy and will never say it. And she fully understands her position that Kazuya does not like her that like that. So she just like lets it be, sort of thing. So that that's the position that Sumi's in. So you know. He, he he rents Sumi because we keep in mind Sumi is a renter girlfriend as well, you know, and you know, for this date and everything because he needs her help. Like, what would what would be a good birthday present for you know, like Mizuhara or just a girl in general? Because Sumi and Mizuhara are friends. That's, that's the episode. That is literally the episode. They go to a play. Uh, at this play, happens to be Mizuhara in it. It's like a Power Rangers play, so he didn't realize it at first gotcha. and, until like the Pink Ranger talked, and cool. then he he realized it was Mizuhara. So. You know, um, the gift that he got her was pickled plums because it's good for fatigue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that makes sense. It does, yeah. So that, that was the whole episode. There you go. Uh, you know, back to the Sumi thing, though. Like, there was uh, in this, you know, date that they were on, they went to a photo booth, whatever, and, you know, you, you see her cherishing all the photos they took. So back to the point of, like, she likes Kazuya, but she knows her place kind of thing. She knows that Kazuya does not like her. She knows Kazuya likes Mizuhara, so, like, it's, it's it's like a depressing thing where it's like, man, I feel for you, Sumi. <laughs> but uh, there you go. That's the episode. That is uh, Rent a Girlfriend this week. Uh, classroom of the Elite. I didn't know Koji's a fucking savage. That is true. <laughs> yeah, Ani Koji, man. Like, dude, the flip the flip switched so quick with that last from episode. season one to yeah. season two, dude, just the last two minutes of, ep- of the last episode of season one, like the flip switch where he's like, I never saw you as an ally. I'm like, damn. Okay. This is about- okay. We're about to get a, a different take. Uh, we're about to explore more on the character. All right. I'm here for this. And even in like the opening for season two, it's kind of really focused on that where it's like, you see like the kid version of him, the normal version of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You like the shot at the end where he's wearing the mask and stuff. Like you're going to get to really explore where he's just like a, a sick fuck in a lot of ways. Whatever that place that we've referenced did to him and the other kids. Fucked him up. Because as far as we know, they killed off the rest of the kids. That's my assumption. Yes. Is that all those kids are dead. That is a, a very safe assumption, I feel like. And then his teacher, who's super shady, he's just like, yeah, do this or I'm just going to expel you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, basically. Uh, episode five, though, they're in the middle of the sports festival. Uh, and there's a traitor. Yeah, there is a traitor amongst the group, which Ani Koji kind of already has it deducted who it is. 
Our two faced girl. Yeah, our two faced girl. Uh, so her name starts with a K, I think. Uh, Kushida. That sounds right. That sounds close enough to be right. You know, we got some moments here in this episode uh, where Anya Koji like unleashed like his savage side, where he just like um, you know went to basically verbally attack. Um, what's her name? Her Toki, the main girl. Oh, uh, her Toki is that it? No. Oh. It starts with an H, but I can't think of her name right now. Anyway, went to go attack her. Essentially, it's just like you know, hey. You know, this is a good chance for you to get your own pet, you know, and just kind of just like going off on her, you know, where it's just like, you know, you're weak as you are now. Like, you know, you know, basically saying that you cannot ascend to the heights that you want to get to. Yeah, it was honestly a pretty savage little conversation. Even, even in that conversation with like, use pseudo Ken like I use you and peace yeah. out. Yeah, that's exactly right. Where it's just like, you know, use him like I use you. It's like, God damn, man. Which he, he uses her all the time. It's just like all these plans and when he comes up and, and I'm just like, so what happened? I don't know. She just told me to do it. And everyone's like, oh, she came up with that? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I love how he just subtly does it. Just, and no one questions it at this point. Yep. Even Hirota, who's... Who here to has some sort of messed up thing that we got to see a bit at the end of season one with his camp. Mm-hmm. He has some weird mental issue. His now uh, tool girl, whose name I can't, who eludes me. The, the blonde. Yeah, the second popular girl who's sort of the leader of all the girls in the, the class. The one who's got a bullying history. Yes. That bullying scene was very depressing. That was, that was uh, just like. I mean, it was rough. It was rough is the best way to put it. And here's I am Koji, just something we're after. Yeah, just watching it all happen. Recording. Yeah. Recording. All right, next time they do it, tell them you're going to release this. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah, no, very entertaining season because the sports festival has slowly been uh, going against them. Sudo had a lead, but as it slowly went on, Class C was targeting both Sudo and uh, main girl whose name eludes us at the moment. And just Class C somehow got word of Class D's participation list, which is hinted at Kushida is the one who released it. Haven't got a confirmation, but I know Koji has been very much hinting that, yeah, Kushida is against Traitor, against us. And he flat out called her out on it, too. And he she, didn't. Oh, well, she did, yeah. Yeah. Main female girl, she did, because... I know Koji told her about that, his suspicions. She just straight up called, had him call her out and said, are you a traitor? I'm just going, um, I didn't expect her just to outright yeah. ask it, but <laughs> okay. He's like, that mm-hmm. works. <laughs> Susan A is her, fir- is her first name. Yes. I don't remember the name that she normally goes. Suzuna. Suzuna, yeah. And so we can go by that for now. can only assume this traitor hymns all the from how she has a dislike for Suzuna and Suzuna has a dislike for her. Weird. Yeah, there's that mutual hatred. Yeah. I, you know, we have... Or- we we you know this you know uh, Kushida whatever she you know obviously she is the two faced character but we haven't really seen that second side though we see brief glimpses of it like it's it's very very light I mean really like I feel like pretty much the initial introduction is the only time you really see it well there was a couple moments on the boat yeah and sort of towards the end of the season one where she asked Ayana Koji between me and yeah, Suzune yeah. who would you choose before know. he could answer well he did answer. And then before she got another question, they all showed up. Yep. Yep. No, season two so far has been super uh, interesting. Just exploring further into Anya Koji and like where he, you know, kind of how he approaches things because it's been dialed up a notch compared to what it was season one. And him slowly getting his weird harem. Yeah, he is. Uh, that is true. He is getting that. But no, I mean, I've, I've been enjoying the watch. It's been pretty fun. And you were so on the fence about it at first. I would do. It took me three times to even make it through episode one. It's a slight slow burn. Yeah, like I'm not joking. Three times. Like I watched it. I tried watching it once. Got ten minutes in. Tried watch the second time. Picked back up from that point. It took. I watched like three minutes and I was done. And then finally the third time, I finally completed the first episode. <laughs> and then I was good from there. But I mean, it's been a fun watch so far. I've enjoyed it. All right, Zach. How close are you to ending with Dragon Quest? I don't fucking know. Yeah, I'm not putting on the script and fall. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. It's getting on the script. I'm not putting it on there. <laughs> it's too far, man. I, I hope it finishes before fall because it's, it's going, not going on the script. Two years of content is not going down the drain just because 
fall decided this is when we're going to release everything. Everything, yeah. Kind of like what John says about games. Oh, you know how everything was coming out in 2020? No, we meant October. October. Yeah. No. I'm not putting it on the script and fall. Two years of content. I don't care if you're p- putting it on the script. It's getting talked about every episode. Well, you better make that like a two-minute conversation. Fuck that. We have other things to talk about. I don't care. This is two years of content. That's seniority. Fuck Dragon Quest. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, how was Dragon Quest? So I forgot in the previous episode that it ended with Dai and King Burn during their key blast towards each other. And uh, the episode starts with that conflict and Dai using his second fist to shoot a second key blast. And I'm saying key blast because I can't remember what the actual attacks were. So we're just going to go key blast. That's a fair way to put it. And uh, Dai obliterates King Burn. As far as we're concerned for the rest of the episode, he's gone. So he might be dead. We'll see. I don't think he is, but he might be dead. Which leaves the fact that there's still Mistavern fighting the B team and then Kilvern skulking about somewhere. Um, Di and Princess Leona have a moment and talking all this fun stuff. And then they fill a rumble and it goes back down. So Mistavern finally released his form thing and shows his true form. He is has a actually humanoid form and all this fun stuff. And the rest of the episode proceeds to talk, everyone to talk about him and everything, and him literally just slap everybody about. And it's just everyone admiring how strong he is and whatnot. And he's literally just slapping everyone. There's a shot towards the end where the wall they're all sitting from has little dents in it from every single character. He has literally slapped <laughs> into the wall for the episode. That's, that's funny. <laughs> like, I saw that. I was like, that's hysterical. That's, that's actually amazing. <laughs> I actually like that. It's so there's just big holes in the wall of just everyone he's just slapped. <laughs> and and honestly, that was the main thing in the episode was Mr. Vern just slapping everyone about and them being like, My God, he's so powerful. And getting to the end of it where and them trying to get a moment for Pop to use his big spell to harm Mr. Vern and everyone taking their attempt to stop him to hold him so do- so pop could use this spell which le- leads to the slap fest that is the wall um only for the end of it to be um poppy offhandedly mentioned you even used your refractor frisk ma'am and it didn't do anything to him and mr beast who is literally just uh the mouses and ma'ams shout out to mr beast 100 million <laughs> subscribers uh ma'am and uh choose master who tarped in martial arts it's just him with a sheet over his head like he's a ghost <laughs> and anytime anyone tries to address him as master he's like i'm mr beast i don't know this old man you're talking about <laughs> and he, he just he's like ma'am you used your refractor fist and did nothing he's like yes master i'm mr beast right now <laughs> oh well that means he's not alive and they're just like oh it's like and if he's not alive i know how to stop him all right, Pop, I'll get him to stop. Make sure you hit your spell. And every, and he walks up, and Mr. Burns like, what fool is this now who's going to step up to me? He's like, ha, you're not alive. The only way you're standing there is you use the, su- the secret magic spell of frozen time. How do you know that secret spell? Ah, oh, what's the matter? <laughs> <laughs> Let's throw hands. <laughs> <laughs> Time to throw hands. Let's go. <laughs> and I was just like, this is a bullshit secret spell. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the episode ended. And the preview was just of uh, Mr. Vern and Mr. Beast throwing hands next episode. So, Okay. okay. Shout out to Mr. Beast. 100 million subscribers. Watch the special today. Shout out to that. Uh, all right. Next up summertime rendering episode 16 so not a okay a lot of like info like context like stuff like that like you know a lot of good you know just general keeping the plot moving development happened but nothing like over the top hype i mean we had back-to-back insanely hype episodes right so it's only natural that like you know this episode's kind of more on the chill side and you know just kind of keep the plot moving sort of thing uh the main kind of takeaways from this episode is like we have the gang going to check out the um, uh, the old uh, like facility again, right? Mm-hmm. Where you know owned by you know uh, Sal's parents and everything, and getting down to like the lab and stuff. Like we have some stuff early on involving the Shadow Mio because they were going to corrupt her. They did c- 
corrupt her where Shadow Mio is on their side, but she still has almost like the same personality as Shadow Mio had before, right? Where she's super like, because Mio is very like energetic, where Shadow Mio is very like mellow tone, right? Okay. And she still has that same sort of like personality, even though she has been like kind of reconfigured to be on their side. So we have some shots at the beginning with like Shadow Mio just, um, you know, being <laughs> kind of kind of a kind of a dick, but in a funny way, right? Okay. Where it's like you know, uh, you know, they have like this mission planned out to go check out that you know facility, or whatever. You know, don't want to bring Mio along, obviously. So Shin asks, you know, Shadow Mio to protect Mio, and Shadow Mio is just like, "Is that an order?" And Shin's like, "I, I wouldn't necessarily call it an order, but I mean, if you could, it'd be really nice. I mean, we'd appreciate that." You know, and then uh, basically Shadow Mio is just like, like talking to Shin and completely outing the fact that Mio likes Shin. Where Shadow Mio is just like, "Have you ever bothered to notice how I've never called you Oni Chan, whatever? Like, you know, brother." You know, he always, she always calls him Shin Chan. And, you know, he's like, have you ever just bothered to notice that I've never addressed you that way? You know, just starting to out Mio. And Mio's just like, all right, shut up. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, please stop. Moving <laughs> past this subject. Basically, basically. So we get over to the facility and everything, just kind of doing uh, some general, you know, looking around and stuff. Um, also, with that as well, with that, uh, the whole like, you know, you know, do you like, because like it started when, Sh when Shadow Mio was just like, hey, Shin, did you get a girlfriend over in Tokyo? And that's what started it. Okay. And Shin's just like, no, you know, no one could really understand my accent, which I am glad that's just openly addressed because when I started watching this show, I wasn't, since I'm not watching the official release, you know, I was curious if this is like just bad translation by someone doing it or the actual way they talk because like, Instead of, I, I think I've mentioned this before, instead of like saying you and stuff like that, they'll say ya or your, you know, and like, gotcha. it's just like their act, it's like the island accent, which is such a nice touch that they have that in the anime, that it is just the accent. So since it's like, yeah, they, no, no one ever understood my accent. So no, you know, I was hoping it'd be like a win in Rome sort of thing, but no. <laughs> I appreciate little touches like that because like there's a series that I watched a while back, Beck. Mm -hmm. which is a slice heard, of life yeah, yeah i've heard of it it's a slice of life series the whole there's a whole aspect of it because it's a japanese rock group and there's aspects of it where they're interacting with english people so they have a nice touch to where they have the japanese and they actually hired some people with some decent english voice acting to do the english parts and there's miscommunication where if you watch the dub it's just all in english right so it looks really weird <laughs> oh okay and I, i'd imagine summertime may be the same way when this if this gets an english release an english dub yeah i could see it being the same way because i mean it is very apparent when you start watching it or they just give him the hardest southern accent oh, possible please no please no please no that would be fantastic please no no but anyway, in that whole sequence, well, you know, Urshiro at this moment, she's currently his watch. You know, it's one of the common transformations yeah. that she does. So she starts freaking out as well because there's an obvious thing between them. So it was just like a funny little moment between everyone. Anyway, back to the main plot point of here is that we're going to check out the facility and stuff. You know, Urshiro, you know, senses a shadow. They're all kind of stanced up, ready to throw down whatever. They turn, they see like the feet of a shadow, and then it kind of zips up, zoops away. Uh, they start kind of chasing it. They reach into a room that it went into. The room is kind of a dead end. There's nothing in this room, just an empty room, walls, whatever. You know, Toiko was also with them at this point. You know, that South sister who obviously was working with uh, Heine in the shadows before. She walks up to the far wall, and the wall is like barely off the ground. She kind of reaches up underneath it, unlocks it. Wall goes up. It's actually a secret door. Sal obviously didn't know about this because you know, you know, as we've already kind of discovered in you know the previous loops, you know, Sal had no idea about all the shit that his family had been doing this entire time. Yeah, no fucking clue that his dad's a fucking giant scumbag. Uh, which you also get to see that his dad's a giant scumbag in this episode because you know as we kind of get further we find the shadow that they saw it was the shadow that is their mother you know because it was confirmed that their mother had been dead this entire time yeah and was a shadow this whole time so that shadow is currently like choking out the dad you know and sal's just like oh god what do we do oh no so that, you know, they all try to kind of, you know, Shin's ready, getting ready to fire, you know, do his thing. And Shao's like, you can't do that. That's my mom. It's like, but she's a shadow. You know, it's a whole thing there, whatever. Uh, Urshiro steps up, you know, in super fast, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog mode, essentially. You know, she's just very, very quick and uh, basically re-corrupts, you know, reprograms that shadow. So she's not trying to now murder the dad. The dad has, 
honestly, I don't know how the dad's alive. I really don't because like she's like holding him up in the air, full blown like Michael Myers choking this dude out one hand, and like you see the shot of where the, the hands around his throat as that happens, you just see like an unbelievable amount of blood just starts pouring. Like there's no way this dude's alive up front. There's no Probably fucking not. There's no chance. If he is, he's a vegetable. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, like I, I'm telling you, dude, the shot was just like just blood. Just coming down, it like there's no way this dude's alive. You know, you keep saying if you're how, choking him out to that point where there's that much blood, no chance this guy's alive. You know, you keep saying how she rewrites him, recrops him. So now all I picture all the shadows is Geth. Accurate, <laughs> accurate. Because we also do get a little bit of a breakdown in that, and I, I don't. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna give the breakdown completely accurately, but it's essentially like um, how shadows reproduce, right? Because, you know, Heine, she, as being, like, the original one of this whole thing, she can basically create as many shadows as she wants. But then each shadow that they create, they can essentially only make, like, one child. Basically, like, murdering one person and creating their shadow. They can only do it once, essentially. So you do get a little bit of a breakdown on how they kind of reproduce. So that was kind of a thing, I guess. <laughs> All right, my children. Now you get one murder pass. Basically. Use it wisely. <laughs> basically. Because otherwise you don't get another one. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, we also get to find out about immunities when it comes to becoming a shadow or not. Because once they save the dad from the mom shadow, you know, there was a, a whole sequence between the two, between them where he's just like, you know, make a shadow out of me, you know, you know, just to kind of prove something, right? And they're unable to. And, they're, and the reason they break it down is because a shadow of you has already been created and that shadow was killed. Therefore, another shadow cannot be created. That is that is that's how he essentially gains an immunity. Okay. Now, now leading up to before that we had that conversation, you get to see how much like this guy's a scumbag essentially, because like you know the Shadow Urshro is there, you know, um, you know he's still in the mindset of working for the Shadows, working for Heine, etc. Um, you know Tokyo is there, so you know Tokyo has been working with him before, obviously, and stuff like that. And he basically tells Tokyo to kill all these fucking people, and she's not doing it. Uh, you know, Sawa has a gun pointing to his dad right now because his dad's like being a fucking psychopath, but it's like super fucking close to him, whatever. And you, someone yells, like, "Oh, you know, Sawa, you're too close to the gun." The, you know, the dad knocks the gun out of his hand, takes the gun himself, and shoots Toiko. Shoots his shoots his daughter. But that that you know, that Toiko that was down there with them the entire time happens to be the Shadow Mio, so everything's fine. Because the moment that it happened, that even I said out loud, I was like, oh, fuck. You know, because he just killed his own daughter. Yeah. But then it just transformed into Shadow Mio. And Shadow Mio, you know, Mio kind of goes up and basically knocks out of his hand, like, you know, does whatever. And she's like, oh, did I surprise you? And then it brings us to the shot of normal Mio and normal Toiko waiting in the truck while they're all doing this entire sequence. So that's when, that's when we got the whole thing where, you know... Um, the dad essentially is still fully pledging his allegiance to, to Heine in this situation. And they're basically trying to talk him down where it's just like, no, he, Heine was going to betray you guys. Like no matter what, there was nothing that you can do about that. Like you guys are going to be fucked from the get go. Um, and once they kind of talk him down, yeah, you know, he's just like, I want to talk to Toiko. Where's Toiko? Toiko comes in. They're all in the room. Now they're all talking about everything about just, um, you know, cause he's like, you know, trying to convince him that no, like, Heine is going to kind of fuck all of you over. Like he has, she has no intention on keeping you alive. Like you're all going to get fucked up front. Um, they end up finally, he's still really on the fence about it, but keep in mind at this point as well, the mom is now currently not under Heine's control there. And she's now like just kind of normal. Right. Uh, it's a mix of like the mom and even Urshiro both convincing the dad to join their cause because he's under the, he's, he's dead as determined that if he follows these orders, that they can be a big happy family again. Cause the mom has been dead this entire time. Right. You know, and that's all he wants is his wife to still be alive. And you know, they're trying to convince him. It's not, it's not how it's going to happen. Heine's going to fuck you over. And you know, Shinpei's whole goal is to kill Heine. Uh, but then the dad, you know, the dad points out, but he's like, but if you do that, then I want you to know that your Ursha is going to disappear as well. Just like my wife. You know, the base of the, you know, Heine dies, all shadows die is, is the main mindset here. Right. Uh, which he's not okay with that. You know, he wants his wife and then, you know, you know, the wife is okay with dying in this situation because she's now coming to realization that she is a shadow. Urshro is convincing her, Hey, you're a shadow. I know I seem completely normal, but I, I died too. I'm a shadow right now, just like you are. 
you know, getting her to come to terms with this. And she's basically convincing him. It's just like, Hey, I'm okay to die. You know, if it can mean for a safe future for our kids, I'm okay with it. And the dad's just like, but without you, I have no purpose. It's like, yeah, you do. You have your kids. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> And, you know, even Ursho is the same way where she's like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, it's no big deal. If I die, I die. It's all good. I've already died once. Me being alive right now, that's just bonus life. It's all good. You know, if you know, Ursho's mindset is if I can, you know, defeat, you know, Haini, whatever, and everyone has a peaceful future, it's worth it. You know, she's like, I already died once. It's all good. This is bonus life. I don't fucking care. Uh, they, you know, through extensive, you know, convincing, they convinced everyone over, you know, and the mom had a nice little moment you know, talking to the two kids real quick now that she's come to realize that she's dead, that she's thankful that she got to still see them grow up, even though she did die, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then the doctor, you know, is now on their side. The dad's on their side, right? And he pulls out a, a book of all of the patients they've ever had come through there and come through their little morgue area they essentially have um, because all of them have essentially been Heidi's meals over the years, which included in there is Shinpei's parents. Shinpei has been under the impression the entire time his parents uh, died when their uh, when their boat sank. That was not the case. They just happened to stumble upon the cave that Heine's uh, that Heine was at, and they were murdered. And it was set up to be a accident. So that was also find found out in this situation. Uh, you know, Shinpei also asked if you know he knew the the actual identity to uh, Shibi, which is forearms. Um, and he did apparently forearms. It's original identity was the first founder of that medical facility where Heine was that we got to see in the flashback episodes. And that is where the episode ended. So just a lot of setup stuff. So he's still going to portray him, right? I feel like it's possible. I don't know. It was a pretty emotional scene between them. So I don't know. We'll see. I think it's still possible. I don't know. He's revealing a lot of information to him now. So maybe not. Maybe not. We'll see. Anyway, it was good. It was good. Good episode. Favorite episode of the week. Overlord. Um, I'll give it to La Corps Recoil. I really liked uh like the plot points that we're developing with the whole no heart thing. That was very intriguing to me, and I'm looking forward to seeing where we go with it. All right, we'll jump into manga ratings and wrap this show up ever so beautifully. Uh, all right, One Piece, 1,055. I feel like I'm going to have a controversial take here. I'm going to give it like a five. I did I haven't, did not care for this chapter at all. There were aspects about it that were good, but my big beef for any One Piece fans listening is that I'm really personally annoyed that you finally introduce this character that you had teased previously like in a character that in theory is supposed to be super, super strong and you made him look like a complete bitch. And I understand completely that it's also to like hype up another character who's like obviously super fucking strong, like a character that we already know and it's well-established character, you know, I fully get that. But it's just like, if you want to just hype up that other character, I feel like there could have been a different way to do it than introducing this character that you've teased so many times and made him look like a complete fucking bitch. I personally wasn't a big fan of that. But from what the leaks that I've read for the next chapter, the next chapter is going to be pretty fucking solid. I just didn't personally care for this one. That's me, though. Uh, My Hero, 361. Eight. Mm, I'm going to give it an eight, but I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. Next chapter is going to be a 10 for me. I'll go ahead and say it right now. Just from like three single shots that I've seen. Uh, Black Clover has returned. And now in its final arc, uh, chapter 332. Uh, not a lot happened, but again, Black Clover is back. That's the I don't know what you're talking about. We got the pivotal moment we've been waiting for since chapter one. Okay, now that is fair. That That is fair. That is fair. We did. Yep. With Asta. Yep. You're Asta fair. got brother zoned. He did get brother zoned, as we always knew he would. It was a great build up, though. It was. Yeah, we're just like, oh, Asta's going to go confess his love. What? <laughs> to who? B? Me? Me? Who? <laughs> no, to the sister. And then we just had that nice moment with Neo going, this is fun. Yeah, yeah, she was, <laughs> oh, I loved her in this chapter. She was having a blast. I'd give the chap- I'd give the, ch- the return chapter, uh, I'd give it an eight. I'd give it an eight as well. JJK, 192. Still have not caught up on. Mm, I'm going to be honest. We're getting to the point where I don't know what the fuck's going on again. Makes sense. Uh, seven. 
Uh, Mission Score Family, 140. I'm going to give this one a 9. It was a lot of interaction between uh, Corchero and the like the uh, the head guy of the spy association, who you know they're they're like best friends and everything, and uh, it was it was just very funny. It was very funny because like they uh, you know they're trying to, they're trying to get all of these uh, basically these creatures that have been planted all throughout the spy association that are just bombs waiting to happen that the the you know the father you know father of Yozakor put in there right. So they they they've come down to the library trying to hunt these down and they find a book. A book that uh, they've both read. They're both massive fans of the book, but they both perceive the ending in two very different ways. So, like throughout this whole chapter, they're like arguing about the ending, where Koichiro is just like, "No, she got in her car, went here, blah blah, to confess her love to her true lover. It's a happy ending." And he and then, you know the, the other guys just like, "No, if you actually paid attention to it, she did this, this, and this, where she basically killed herself off a cliff. It's a tragic ending." So it was just like a funny like interaction between the two of them, where even where we get it got time to get serious, right? And you get to see the the boss of the spy association do some serious work because he's more like the stealthy type because uh, Corchero was ready just to get fucking unleashed right he was like all right whatever let's fucking knock these out all real quick and he's like Cal- calm down this is a very important library just let me handle this i'm stealthy you're not chill while i'm doing this why don't you go read that book again and figure out that i'm right and you're wrong go and does this thing whatever comes back and it's just like you know he, you know Corchero is holding the book he's like it doesn't matter how many times i read this book i will always come to the concur- the correct conclusion that is mine so it was just a funny uh interaction between the two of them i really enjoyed it uh, Undead and Luck, 121. Uh, I'd give this one an 8. Mashal, 118. I give it a 7, personally. I give it a 6. Sakamoto Days, 81. You give it a 9. I give it a 9. The only thing I'm learning from Sakamoto Days is don't fuck with old people. Yep, don't fuck with old people. True. Uh, Alu Samurai was on a break this week. Uh, Blue Box, 63. Okay, so Hina's in the lead, man. Hina's not in the lead. Hina is in a prime position to make out with our MC... On stage in front of people, she's not in the lead. As it stands, I already know where this is going to end. But at this stands, she is in the lead, seeing as she's going to gonna get a kiss, and um, main heroine hasn't even gotten that point yet. She's not in the lead in our MC's heart. That's all that matters. Yeah, he's been leaning that way a little. Eh, not in the lead. He can't get her out of the head of the shot of her just laying on that desk. Now that is true, he can't. But she's still not in the lead. I'll give it a chapter and eight. I'll give it a nine. P6, 43. I give it an 8. Akane Ibanashi, 24. 8. Chainsaw Man, 101. <laughs> you should kill her. What? Why would I do that? You can make a weapon out of her. She'd be really strong. You'd like her. <laughs> be more, you'd, you'd feel guilty about it. It makes it more powerful. <laughs> Talk about devil on your shoulder, man. I know. Uh, I'll give it... <laughs> I'll give it an eight. I'll give it eight as well. You should back up slowly. I said slowly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Kaji number eight, chapter sixty-eight. Nine. Uh, I give it a nine as well. And Kaji number eight will be on a break for the next month. Oof. Yep. Uh, Tokyo Avengers two sixty-four. I'll give it an eight. I give it an eight as well. Uh, Run a girlfriend two forty-six. Man, what happened in 246? I know I read it. I know for a fact I read it. Oh, I try to remember. Ah, I give an eight. A decent chapter. Eden Zero 202. Now, that one I did. I forgot to read. I just realized that. I meant mm. to read it today. I'll give it a seven. Also forgot to read Seven Deadly. My fault. Uh, Unordinary 270. Seven. Seven. Uh, True Beauty 217. Uh, oh man, lots of stuff happening right now in this series. Lots of stuff happening because we're at that big pivotal moment of her secret being out to the world, you know. Uh, I'd give this one probably a nine or a ten. This was a very good chapter. There was a lot of lot of interesting things about this, and the chapter leaves you on a big, big cliffhanger. So nine or ten. Uh, we care two or one. I'll give it a seven. I'll give it a seven as well. I will say it's interesting that we're seeing how Jimmy got into the union essentially, yes. but I still have no connection to this backstory. <laughs> I just, I just don't. So this, these past few chapters have been kind of boring for me personally. Uh, L seed one eighty. What happened to one eighty? That's a good question. I want to say eight, but I don't remember entirely what happened. Okay. 
Uh, Let's play 173. I'd give this one probably a nine as well. Uh, this was a big um, Sam and Marshall episode. And, you know, just them, like, being friends and shit, right? And I'm, I, I've am i been on this ship since day one because, like, first and foremost, it's very clear from day one that's going to be the ending ship. You know what I mean? Like, that's very, very clear just from how the series is, is created, you know? And plus, not to mention the fucking cover art of the damn series. <laughs> I mean, like, it's very clear. So I've been on this ship from the get-go. I've enjoyed it a lot. This is a big, you know, friendship bonding episode between the two of them. So I enjoy that. Uh, Sub Zero 147 that came out last week. That was the mid season finale, so I figured I'd rate it this week because I did not read it last week. My fault. Gotcha. Uh, I give it a nine. Very, very, very good. Uh, a huge moment that we've been waiting for with Clove for a long time. Looks like it's finally happened of her being able to access um, her her dragon abilities. So it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting what happens when the mid season comes back. Uh, Down to Earth 107. Damn, what happened in 107? Was this the photo shoot? Oh, this was. Yeah, this is the photo shoot. Photo shoot chapter. Uh, I'll give this one probably a 7. Uh, suit Armor, 75. Very interesting point where we are right now with Suit Armor. Um, I'd probably give this one a 7 as well. Major Demon Queen is on a break at the time being. Reunion, 25. I'd probably just give this one a 6. Nothing super interesting in my opinion. Um, Immortal Weakling, chapter 8. Uh, I would probably give this one probably an eight. Pretty solid chapter. Favorite chapter of the week? Sakamoto. I would say True Beauty. I'm telling you, man, with where we are right now, with you know, this is such, this is a huge moment for this series. You know, I, every like right now, I'm on the edge of my seat. Like I, Actually, I need I take the next mine chapter. Better. I say Akanai Banashi because ah, it's setting okay. up something very nice. There you go. There you go. Yeah, True Beauty, man. This it, it's on a it's on a different level right now. It is on a completely different level. I mean, this is the moment we've waited for since literally chapter one is her secret being revealed to the world of what her actual face looks like. Uh, and you know what? I Actually, I'll just go ahead and hammer a 10 for that chapter because I just remembered something else about this chapter that was just like done so well of where like she leaves like because the last chapter ended with her at her agency. Right. And then in this chapter, you see just like how mentally like psychotic her her like main agent is where you know her main agent was the one that tipped off people about her true identity but then you know you know uh she's just like you know i wasn't ready for that like i was scared i was i didn't want to do that but then you know her her you know agent was just like yeah but look at all the numbers that you're getting you're so popular you know this, now, you, now you have a great sob story that you were bullied and this and that and this and that like she's a complete bitch you know so you know main character who I, again will never even attempt to pronounce her name uh you know she's leaving and walking through the crowd she's currently in makeup right but she's like in a mindset where she thinks everyone's talking about her like whispering but no but no one actually is but then after that bro was such an awesome shot of where it, she's like in her head and across from her is her non makeup version, and the and the two of them are talking to each other, where it's like the you know her real her normal version is just like yeah, but you hated me, you tried to hide me, you didn't try to accept me, you didn't try to accept me one time, and you know the makeup version is just like yes, I did, I tried to. It's like oh yeah, really? No, no, you didn't. You just tried to kept push me further and further down. You were trying to hide me at every every turn. So it was a nice inner conflict. Uh, that she was having. So I, I'll give the chapter a 10, honestly. That was very, very well done. I really enjoyed that. Uh, with all that said, I think that's it for the show. I think we got everything. Sounds about right. So I'll hit the music and we can work our way out here then. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, whatever your platform allows. It does help. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can hit that subscribe button to help us build our community here. And also hit that bell to notify you when any video is up. Thank you very much. Bye. Do everything that he said and more, uh, including checking out us at our website, sparky3.com. You sign up for free or sign up five bucks a month. Definitely appreciate that. Check out some Rogue Energy promo code, Sparky Favorite 10% off. Use the referral link down below. We definitely appreciate that as well. As well as join the Discord and check out the merch store, which does have a promo code. The famed promo code Tech Probs with a Z is back. So we had a Tech Prob kicking off a terrible football show live. 25% off everything in the merch store right now. Follow us over at Twitter at NMN Podcast. Check out the other shows like Game Static Terrible Football Show, which, of course, has gone live. Talk movie stuff and Spark Park. With that said, until next time, guys, have a good one. See you next week.